Come and get up some more for the attitude. You don't even want to be bothered with yourself. And God still says, come here, come here. Come sit on my lap. Come here, come here. I got a blessing for you. Come here, come here. I want to bless you. That's why I love him. Come on, somebody. Because he didn't give up on us. Amen. We love the Lord because he first loved us. Amen. And how many, how many have had a week in your life? Every now and then you go through this. You say, you know, when I get to church, I'm going to bless God. Yes, yes, yes. So all week long, God has been putting thermostats on my heart. Thermostats. So okay, Lord, thermostats. <laughs> uh, and you start reading, and, uh, and, I, and I think I know what he wanted me to say. You know, some of us believe that God is good, that he will do wonderful things for people, but we don't believe he'll do it for us. We believe he'll do it for somebody else. We see somebody else blessed with a, with a car. We see somebody else blessed with a job. We see somebody else blessed with finances. But, and we'll bless God for that, but we don't believe that he will do it for us. I believe what God is saying to us is he wants us to believe him. Now, we're supposed to give tithe and testimonies, and that's, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm, I'm going to give a testimony that lets you know that, that God is good, and God stands ready to bless you if you will allow him to. He'll do it for you. And you need to say that to yourself. He'll do it for you. He'll keep saying it. He'll do it for you. So uh, I was reading the verse, and the verse says, um, Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is light. My burden is easy. I think it's, you know, something like that. Um, and what I got to thinking about is, it is a yoke. It's a yoke. But it's a yoke of edification. See, it's a yoke of, 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 of teaching. And see, it's a yoke that if you take it upon you, and I want you to remember, he never says, let me put this yoke on you. See, he wants you to submit. Amen. And then that, that, I kept reading that, and I kept, okay, God, he wants you to put it on, because he wants you to understand, if you take my yoke, I'll keep you in perfect health. Amen. See, if you take my yoke, I'll teach you how to uh, be a loving husband. You take my yoke, I'll teach you how to be a good father. And so I started thinking about that, and so I, I, I was talking about this thermostat, and here's what he said to me. He said, why won't people believe me? Why won't people trust me? They'll trust the thermostat more than they trust me. And I said, what do you mean, God? Here's what he said. He said, if you're cold and you're sitting there, let's just call that the climate of your situation, and you decide that you want it to be warm, You'll start thinking to yourself, you know what, I want to be warm. And you'll start imagining that warmth. And you'll go, you know what, let me get up and go to the thermostat and change the thermostat. Expecting that when you change that temperature, that that temperature is going to be regulated. And then you walk away, not giving it a second thought, expecting that the temperature is going to change. And when the temperature changes, you start giving some hallelujahs and thank you, Jesus, and all kinds of things. But you never give it a second thought. God wants us to be the same way when it comes to him. Amen. See, we can go to the thermostat. I just call it a spiritual thermostat. Mm -hmm. And I call that faith. I call that thermostat. I call that faith. Because your faith is what regulates your climate. Amen. And we're able to go to Jesus. We were able to go straight to the Father because of the sacrifice that Jesus made. But here's what he said. He said, you got to believe me. Amen. Do you really trust the thermostat more than you trust me? Wow. See, a lot of faith, a lot of blessing. Little faith, little blessing. Mm -hmm. blessing because your faith is what triggers your blessing. Mm -hmm. So God is saying to me, check your thermostat. Make sure you trust God and come expect it and walk boldly. And God will do it for you. Bless the Lord. Amen. Lord. I'm going to tell you. Luke chapter 17 says, we prepare to enjoy the Lord. Uh, on today, I too want to thank God for all of our young people. I've heard just come off the side. There are a number of them that are there. on the honor roll. I am so proud of them. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing extremely well in school. Amen. Oh, 
to um, get into Luke chapter 17. And there's two places, though, I want to share with you because I'm convinced, church, that for what God has for us, um, it is for us, don't get past the wrong, but I think there are things that we got to do. We have, we have to be willing, Sister Chanel, to move from, again, our familiar, our comfortable places. Um, I'm going through a process right now in my job where I, I feel vulnerable because it's, I'm in leadership, and though the leadership is not uh, new to elder, leadership at the company at that level is. And so when you don't know certain things, you are forced to find out. Thank God I have a good mentor on the job, but still, they can't tell you everything. Well, I think God has what you want to learn through experience. Right, right, right. I was telling my wife, one of the things that I was impressed with them in management training, and one of the uh, <coughs> directors was sharing with us a number of things, and, and one of the things she shared was powerful. She said, you know, you need to learn to manage uh, with fact and not feeling. Because those people are going to be doing some stuff. Amen. Yeah. Sharing with Pastor Emily. <coughs> Somebody that I've taken care of since day one, even before that, was counseling, giving them, I mean, just, just working with them. I found out they were the one, one main one stabbing me in my back. Oh, wow. I was calling people, but oh, bless God, I thank God for the anointing. Yes. Thank you. And, uh, thank you. Listen to Pastor when I say that for you, I'll be happy. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so what I did was I called them into a meeting. <laughs> and one of the things that our, 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 our mentors have shared with us is that you have been chosen to have the difficult conversations. Yes, sir. Now, I can't tell you what she told me in the pulpit, but, you know, she said, you got to find a way to tell people when they're not the best. <laughs> and she said, yes, don't pass them off to other leaders. You deal with it. Amen. And so we learned to have those very difficult conversations. And this week was filled with those for pastor. <laughs> I mean, one day in particular, Wednesday, I just had a headache the entire day at work because I was having to just deliver different things and just certain things happened. I was like, oh, God, is this what it's about? And the Lord began to show me something. He said, you know, pretty much stop trying to run. Every time things get difficult and get hard, stop trying to move and get out of the fire. Because listen, if we really do believe that all things work together for the good, then the reality of it is that God has us there for a reason. Forget about the devil. We entertain so much of what he's saying. No, no, no. Think about what God is doing with your life. Maybe God has you there because he is allowing those experiences to train you and prepare you for where he's ultimately going to take you. That's right. Because it's not just difficult conversations in corporate America. Those same difficult conversations need to happen in the church. I was talking to Dr. Fleming last night, and I had her laugh, and I said, it's so funny how when we come to church, you know, we just think things are just going to be thrown together. And praise the Lord, people get to serve in positions that are not qualified. Well, somebody's got to tell them you're not qualified. Amen. That's right. Amen. And then, you know, somebody's got to tell them, well, you know, you may have, you know, you know, you may want to do that, but did God call you to do that? Oh, come on, church. You know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Did you see what happens for you? Is that many people don't want it to be fixed. They like to sit and so they have something to talk about. I want it fixed. Amen. Ah, God. Oh, all right, meet me in one of my leadership sessions and we'll have that fireside. <laughs> tell me it's getting tight, but it is right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. God's church is a place that uh, where, where he wants to be organized. Amen. Amen. With some structure, some sound, some foundation, and so we're learning. We're growing. Amen. Amen. We thank God for willing workers. We thank God for willing educated workers. Amen. Even pastors growing the people. He's telling first thing, boy, if God has blessed us this far and, and to this degree without certain things being in place, what is God going to do with us as we continue to take what we have learned and apply it? Thank God for the four or five amens and one clap from Sister Kwan. So, amen. Church is working pastor today, but y'all know it's the truth. It's time for us to grow and it's time for us to do better. Let me tell you something. There is a reason why they refer to it as growing pains because it doesn't always feel good. So, I was sharing with my, some of my staff this week. I said, You might not like me today, but I'd rather you hate me today and love me tomorrow. There's nothing else you'll be able to say. You know what? But Mike told me the truth. Amen. 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 Have people going out for stuff. You know they, they're not capable of doing that. That's like calling me. As much as I love to play the bass, every time I get over there and play, God reminds me that he's removed me from that. <laughs> <laughs> it happened last week. We were at the state meeting. And I, you know, I, I took the brother. He had that five-string bass. And when I started reaching for certain strings, I said, it's over. Hallelujah. <laughs> What's my point? You got to know what you've been called yeah. right. To do, but I want you. To, I want you to look at a couple of scriptures with Pastor, just two in particular, and I want to walk through this, and, and we'll be done for the day. So I said, Luke chapter seventeen, right? Let's look at verses um, eleven through nineteen. This is some good word here. And, and and here's the interesting thing. While I get start, before I get started, I was I went to go see Pastor Corey Hatchett on last Sunday myself, and I think John was able to go. And just want to surprise him. Once he got to preach, we just want to surprise him. I happened to uh, Mr. Carr came as well. 
and um, she was supposed to be serving, I think, in the kitchen, just helping out, and never made it, but uh, she was supposed to be. But, uh, uh, some of y'all missed that comment, but no, she did make it. And um, I was sitting on, on the front row, and as Pastor was talking, uh, Holy Spirit started to speak to me, and, and I started to read this text, and God said, and, was just, and this is really funny, you know, Pastor's not into cliches, a lot of times you see me, I get up and I just start preaching, I'm going to give you a, serve, a, a title or a subject, not that I haven't been trained to talk, but I'm just, you know, sometimes God leads us that way, but this, this, this thought dropped in my spirit, get to step. And I said, what? And then here's the funny thing, the Holy Spirit said it again, get to step. I said, okay, God, I, you know, I'll preach it. And I started writing right there, front row, while he was preaching his sermon. I was giving, right now what God was giving to me. Now, I don't know why I had to go to his church to get it. On Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, because honestly, God could have told me that at my house. <laughs> God, I'm do something of you like that, praise the Lord. Why? So, so let me read this, Luke chapter 17, verse 11 through 19. The Bible says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he, excuse me, that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were, were not, I'm sorry, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found, wow, that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Amen. Get to stepping. Now, go with me to 2 Kings. Keep your finger there because I'm going to go back to Luke 17 in just a minute. But go with me to 2 Kings. I, I just cannot get this out of my spirit either. And I, I want you to see something. God, I want you to see something. I pray that you walk with blessed with this on today. Actually, I think you're blessed already. You just heard that scripture there. Amen. Blessed already. So, so 2 Kings chapter 7. You ready? And I want to pay close attention to verses 3 through 8. You kind of know the story. If not, I'm going to recommend that you read it when you can. But 2 Kings chapter 3 through 8. I just want you to see this because um, this is time for us to get stepped. In other words, it's time for us to, to get moving. It's time for some action on our part. Amen. And um, oh, this is good. I, I just love the word. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city. Ooh, another way. Now, God didn't tell me that, to, to name it or to give this, this, this sermon this title. But another way that he wants us to get the message out would be like, you know, like Nike's slogan, just do it. Some of us are just like these leprous men. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself because we haven't finished reading it all. But, but you are suffering from what we refer to as the paralysis of analysis. We keep thinking and thinking, but we're never doing. Understand what James says. He says that faith without works is dead. You don't get anything. Amen. Because you can hear the word. Amen. You can have, get information as you heard us share at the state meeting last week. And, and no application. And it doesn't do you any good. I think Deacon Johnny shared it when he was given the title and testimony this morning. You know, it's going to require something. You just don't want to know it. You want to live. You want to do this thing. And watch God show up, too. Watch this now. So he says here in verse 4, if we say we will enter into the city, ooh, Lord have mercy. And by the way, you know, I'm not talking about leprosy. Leprosy is a, is a disease that's in the skin from a natural standpoint. But spiritually speaking, leprosy can be all over your body because it affects your mind more than anything. not what God has ordained for your life. Ooh, yeah, that's leprosy. Mm -hmm. And it'll keep you apart from everybody that's moving and shaking. I'll tell you like the old folks used to say, you show me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. Are, you, oh, I feel like right are your friends advancing? Or who do you seek? Lord, this is good. Mm. Who do you seek out? I'm going to try to stand behind this podium and just do what I got to do and sit there. Who do you seek out when you start going through things? Do you seek people who are living at a lower level or have a lower quality of life because they make you feel comfortable? Or, or do you seek out people that are going to help pull you up? Come on, somebody, help you think on another level. Help you walk in your destiny. Help you walk in your purpose and your calling that God has for your life. See, because the thing with leprosy is that leprosy will cause you to live an isolated life. Mm. Leprosy will
will cause you if you're not careful to be your own worst enemy. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't want to be around people because whenever somebody comes like Pastor Smith to encourage you to go forward and I touch you in the spirit room, you, that's sensitive to you because you don't want to be touched in that area. You're comfortable. No, oh, Lord, this is good. I'm prophesying to somebody. You've been hurt and jacked and you've, been, you've experienced some what I call jacked up situations. But then you mess around and come to a church like New Bethel and you meet a pastor who really loves you. A pastor who doesn't want anything more from you than for you to experience all that God has yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it pains you because I'm challenging you to That's be right. better than That's what right. you were. Right. Uh, right. 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 Y'all not careful when you finish preaching preach before you realize what's happening here. That's what God wants for us. And oh man, watch what these guys say. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Mm, mm, mm. Talk about a dilemma. Talk about a dilemma. Boy, that's some good word right there. He says here, as we move on further, now therefore come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Look at that. Look at that. This is the thing that gets pastors' attention a lot of times in scripture. You know, it's when I get paralysis of analysis. I will tell you what I was dealing with all during this week is I was having to have difficult conversations with different people. The reality of it is I was wearing myself out, waking up 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, thinking about how I'm going to say it and how I might go if they respond this way. Then I need to go that way. If they respond this way, then I need to go that way. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yes, the reality right. of it is the Holy Spirit will say, just do it. Yes. Yes. Right. Sometimes people need to be told. Praise right. 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 Do it in love. But guess what? You know, all that thinking and can on you. Wearing yourself out. Yes, you are. And God has already told you, get the step in. Especially yes. when you get a word yes. from the Lord. And all yes. the other stuff don't matter. Why do we keep considering the situation or the circumstance once we've had a word from the Lord? Do you know the situation don't matter when, when God has spoken? Yes. 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 And, and I'm, I'm sharing this today because somebody is struggling with what it looks like. The reality of it is, it doesn't even matter what it looks like if God has called you. That's right. Well, Pastor, I, well, Pastor, I've never done that before. That doesn't matter. What matters is how, how do you know that God does not want you to be the one to break the record? How do you know that God, God is not calling you to be the one that breaks the mold? Because I'm going to tell you something, it ain't even just about you. Ooh, Lord have mercy, you will see as you read further in this text. When you step forward and you enter into what God has for you, there's a, there's a boatload of other people that were just looking for that way to be. Oh. And then listen, listen, for those of us that God is continuing to prosper and continuing to bless and to mature, understand this, I was up this morning still just reading this particular text, and uh, I was re reading about, uh, what's his name, Billy Graham. And somebody asked him at the height of his game, you know, how is it that you are the number one televised evangelist or number one evangelist and, you know, you're, you're wealthy and you're successful and you're this, that, and the other. How do you stay humble? Mm. He said, years ago I was in prayer. And he said, now I asked God to help me with that. And he said, God responded to him and told him in prayer. He says, you know how you can remember and stay humble? He says, I want you to remember this to Billy Graham. He says, you were not my first choice. Wow. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but I'm very sensitive like that. And when I read that, I almost started crying. Because that, that helps you understand, oh, for those of us who want to be pompous and pious and feel like you, you know, you're grand and grandiose, all you need to have is just one of them moments with God. When he calls you to understand, I don't care how anointed you think you are, you weren't my first choice. And oh, just like he can remove whoever was first choice, he can remove you too. So, and that's important to pass it because watch this now. Because he, he messed around, he chose me, Rakaya. I want to good, good, do a good job doing what he's called for me to do, April. I don't care how difficult it is. Sweetie, you've got to know that God has ordained you for this season to do what you are doing today. And watch this, let me prophesy to you. You are effective right now in the ministry that God has given to you. of the enemy than a whole lot of other people. And for that, we celebrate the Jesus in you. Yes. Oh, yes. There are many pioneers. There are many evangelists. There are many missionaries out there. And you can, uh, and you can come from where she has come from. And you still in your right mind, girl. Oh, come on, we ought to give God some praise up here. That's a good place to bless her. Come on, that's a good place to put me in the key real quick. Yes. 
They need to hear success stories like this, Shane, because many times they are always worried about what somebody else said, what somebody else did, how somebody else is going to feel. Yeah. Tracy, you get to a place where none of that stuff matters anymore. Yeah. Because as long as you keep letting that stuff matter, you, Chanel, will remain with leprosy. And the reality of it is, Jesus Christ has come to set you free and to heal you yeah. from that leprosy. Lord, this is good. Verse 5. And they arose. I gotta read it again. They rose up in the twilight. See how they come out. See how look at this. Look, Nikki, this is interesting because they don't wait to come out when the sun is bright. They wait to come out deep when it's dark. You know why? Because just in case they don't want nobody to see them. Have you ever been like that? You all, oh, how many have been impregnated by God? Or God has given you a vision, God has given you some passion and something to do, and you're in an environment where not everybody will understand what God gave to you. Amen. Oh, and you know, most African American folks will know what I'm talking about when I say this. You know, when, when, when God starts blessing you and you strive for better and more, a lot of times people say stuff like, you think you're better than us. <laughs> and, and, and listen, and they do a real good job of making you feel like something wrong with you when the reality of it is, Mookie, something wrong with them! Yeah. Yeah. And us, Jessica, with our intelligent selves, have the audacity to allow what they're saying to affect us. Yeah. And then before you know it, you stop reaching for your dreams, and you stop reaching for your goals. Yeah. Don't ever stop doing that. Yeah. I shared with somebody at work, I think this week or last week, I told them this fast, I said, guess what? I read it somewhere, but I can't remember who pointed it. I said, if you have goals, if you have goals and no plans, all you have is a wish. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I went to the rest of the break up and realized that one. Praise God. No, you got things that you want. You can start working, but just make sure you take what you put together and you keep giving it to the Lord and watch God take care of the rest. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. So look at this, verse 6. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. Ooh, this is good. Lord, this is good. For people that, oh, you just need, you just need God. How many sometimes you just come to church and you just need a word from the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. Anything sometimes grandiose. Sometimes, sometimes you just need that spiritual touch yeah. from God to know God is with me. Yeah. And God is saying, you get to step in. See, the things that you're considering, God did not send. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You've heard us share again and again and again that when fear knocks, faith has to answer. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Oh, how can you walk around with that hope? Because I've experienced it enough times to know better. And here's the real deal. I had to get out the boat first. That's right. That's right. And then when I figured out that I could walk on water, and then I figured out that certain people, I gotta be careful about how I say this, but certain people that I highly respect, they don't have enough faith to get out the boat. <laughs> then I had to realize that I can't tell them all what God has shown me. But they really try to kill you. Then y'all y'all not talking to the crazy. That's so I realized, you know, sir, oh God, this is good. Lord, this is, I'm trying to keep myself together. Because God has shown me Kwan, that I'm getting ready to have myself a Joseph experience. Yeah. Yeah. I can trust y'all with that, praise. I can trust you there with that, but I won't give y'all the details. But and and what I, here's what I mean by that. What, what, what God would do with Joseph, watch, because this is kingdom talk. God would allow Joseph to be, I mean, get to like that one of the highest places in the kingdom, Bailey. And watch this now. Joseph don't own nothing, Assistant Pastor. Amen. But he's living in the best. He's riding in the best. Eating the best. Oh, come on, this is some kingdom talk. Jesus got the same for us. Amen. Pharaoh says, the anointing of God is on this brother. And he said, every time the brother say something, it come to pass. Amen. Every time he touch something, it's blessed. I, oh, God, I want you to you got that same anointing on your yes. life. Yes. People are going to seek you out. Now, watch this now, because many of us in the stage where, watch this, God is developing you. Oh, this is good. Just like Joseph. You know, and, and that's why the Bible really doesn't speak to Joseph, Deacon Carr, you know, complaining about where he is. It really, if you really look at the scriptures, it really paints a picture like Joseph was just happy. It just seemed like he always knew God was with him. Now, most of us want to tell somebody, let me tell you my story. I mean, it's been 20 years, but let me tell you how my brother sold me in the slave. <laughs> now, what you don't know about that is every time you tell a story, you relive it. That's right. That's right. See, see, some of us, certain things, you ought to be like, yeah, God delivered me from that. I ain't got time for all them details. God delivered me from that. Come on, come on. Yeah. What you see? The one thing I love about Joseph is Joseph was never afraid to step out and do what God called him to do. Yes. Joseph was never, watch this now, and here's the other thing I love about Joseph. His relationship with the Lord never changed, no matter what right. happened to him. He yes. all, oh, come on. I don't know about y'all. I don't know about y'all. I don't know about y'all. I didn't read when Joseph was married. He just knew he shouldn't have sex before he got married. Yes. And so when Potiphar's wife came back to me, he's like, I ain't sinning against my God. Yes. Notice he didn't say my girl. Yes. I ain't sinning against my God. Yes. Always have a relationship with the Lord. Where are we at? 
and I walk with the Lord, no matter what God allows to happen to us, I realize, look, Kendra, that all things are working together for my good. It doesn't always feel good. Watch this now. The outcome is not always what I thought it was going to be, but I have been, I walked with the Lord long enough, Mom, tell him to know God is in control. Yes. Yes. You know what the Lord keeps saying, Michael? You just keep considering what you're going through. I remember him telling somebody some difficult things. Somebody might very close to me hurt me very bad, hurt me very, very bad. And God said, You got two choices. You can stand there and keep thinking about what happened, or you can get up and do something. <laughs> And they get up and do something that didn't have nothing to do with being vindictive either. I need to say that. Praise the Lord. Some of y'all say, ooh, that's just what I need. No, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> no. You know, when you realize, watch this now. That's the best way for me to say this like this. When you realize that life has dealt you lemons, make some lemonade, baby. Right, man. Sit down. Matter of fact, put it in the refrigerator. Get it nice and cold. Get yourself a cup after it sat there for about an hour or so. Sit down and chill and say, if I got to be here with the serious, I might as well enjoy myself. Yeah. I mean, because ultimately you got to know it's not God's will that you remain there, but if he got you there, then it must be a purpose that's got to be served while you there. Right. Right. These lepers didn't know that God was setting their butts up for a blessing. Yeah. You have been ostracized, you've been praised aside, you've been criticized, all in eyes and sides, but guess what? God had something greater. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? This message is really for my God saying, don't step deep, Joe. It's for people who keep making excuses. Right. 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 That's for people to keep making excuses. Yeah. And if you're not careful, you get comfortable with the excuses. Yeah. And it just feels good. Trust me, whenever you're challenged, you start making excuses. Stop making excuses. Stop. Yeah. That's why Pastor Webb's message last week didn't feel too good to a lot of people. Yeah. Because he's saying, you know, in order for you to get to the next level in God, you have to learn how to fast. Yeah. And he was saying, fasting simply means to abstain from. Yeah. So this week, Dean Jason, look at all me, because you and I talk. I'm going to talk all about this, because you and I talk. Ah, man, I did two days. And you know what? Day one when I was fasting, Satan was five, and he was cutting up. Cutting up. Day two, you know, I mean, it seemed like the Holy Spirit started punching him in the stomach, and he started yeah. shutting up. Right. I was thinking about going three days. Amen. But the reality of it is, God is teaching us how to abstain from certain things. Like Pastor said, if you want to be wealthy, then you know what? You got to abstain. You got to realize that every time everybody else is going out, that's not the best time for you to go out. And you don't have to feel bad about it. Amen. So verse, you know, I can sit down right here. I'm pretty my own self happy because I'm ready to go be. I, I am. I'm ready to go be all that God has called me to be. I know He's got nothing but greater things for me to do. See, the problem is we keep considering what everybody else is saying and what everybody else is doing. God's trying to take us higher. Yes. Because on the other side, think about this where these brothers are. On the other side, you, see, you know why he says get to stepping, even if I don't make it back. Because this is good. In Luke 17, when you see them ten lepers there, here's the reality of it. Them brothers were lepers. They're in leper state. They were lepers, right? But get this, get this. Here's what strikes my, gets my attention in both this text, 2 Kings, and in Luke chapter 17. Watch this. I'm going to let you know the secret. God was going to leave both of them there in those positions or those predicaments if they didn't do anything. Amen. Amen. See, let me let you know the secret. While you're waiting for God to move, he's waiting for you to move. Come on, these brothers sitting in, I mean, they're going through, I mean, they're doing what all of us would do, sitting down considering, if, yeah. we, if we do this, then this is what happens. If we do that, then that's what happens. If we do this, then, you know, whenever you have it like that, just get up and go. Yes. You know what I mean? Amen. Watch this. Verse 5. They rose up in the twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. Oh, verse 6, I'm sorry. For the Lord had made up uh, the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, No, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Now, if you're a child of the king, and I'm talking about, uh, let's call you, for sake of, you know, this, this text here, let's call you an Israelite today. Don't you think our God, I mean, we sing it, but how many of us really believe that he is, our God is great? Yeah. 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 That beautiful van over there. How many of us know he really is the Lord of Lords? Yes. Yes. How many of us know he really is the King of Kings? Yes. Yes. How many know God can he, he can allow all of other kings to hear something that really ain't so, That's just right. so you benefit? Yes. I mean, I, I want you to get in your spirit, church, because I'm telling you, that's what God has for us. You know what? When we get up, Dick and Johnny talked about it. I believe that I am not a thermometer. Did you hear me? I says, I'm not the one to walk around and tell you what the temperature is. I'm a thermostat. I believe when I walk in the room, they sense that the anointing of God is on that man right there, and things change. That's right. And I know it's the truth. Because when I go around, people start getting happy. They don't even know why they happy. I mean, people, listen, people who otherwise would hate my guts, they have got to come and submit because they weren't God on my life. Right. Right. I got news for you. Somebody said news flash. Right. You got the same anointing on your life. That's right. That's right. That's right. People will continue to seek you out 
But understand this so that you don't, you don't become puffed up. That God is doing that because it's his, it's his will of getting his kingdom work established in the earth. Make sure you give him the glory. Make sure you give him the honor. Make sure you give him the praise. Make sure you tell people if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Amen. Because God's got places he's taking us. Amen. Amen. Question is, can he trust us when he takes us there? I'm quick to tell people it was the Lord. I didn't look good in some of my own. I love it. I remember I was in, uh, in, in, in Nullock State preaching. And uh, the bishop, you know, he's a very, very bright guy, uh, academic and whatnot, scholarly and whatnot. And after service, he says, where did you go to school? And I said, I did. He said, <laughs> didn't have nothing to say. And it felt so good to be able to tell him that my diploma came out of Acts chapter 4. Yeah. I have been with Jesus! Yeah. 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 I've gone to school since then, but I figured out you can sit in class for 200 years yeah. and not have a dip of anointing. Do you hear me? All that reading and study, reading and study, as God don't meet you and you don't know him and he don't know you, that's a jacked up situation. But when you can mess around and commune with Jesus. So, verse 6. Verse 7, shall I say. Wherefore, he says, they arose and fled in the twilight. Good night. And look at this. They left their tents and their horses and their ass. Lord, have mercy. Even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when the, these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carry them silver. This is so good to me. And gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried them also and went and hid it. I mean, God, listen, church, yes. the stuff that God has for you, it's like That's right, right there. But you got, oh, man. If you would just be willing to just step from one position yes, to the next and yes, say, oh, I'm going to change my position. Yes, I'm going to change my location. Yes, Make it back to Luke 17. I, I already know I'm not. I'm not. Get to stepping. What are you waiting for? You know, as we are in the month of February right now, the reality of it is, how many of us started out this year wanting God to do things? We want stuff changed in our lives. How many of us have already put into a plan or put a plan in motion for the change to take place? I'm not going to do like Pastor Hatcher did his people last week. He said, Stand up and tell me what you're doing. Well, that's between you and God. I didn't worry about that, but I hope you're not lying. But the reality of it is, what have we set in motion? What are we doing to bring about that change? Because as one wise person said, if you keep doing the same stuff and expecting a different result, that's insanity. God is calling for us to come up a little bit higher. And all of us who are in tight situations and tight circumstances, you are exactly where God wants you. I just pray that while you're in that situation, that you stop, you, you don't backtrack. You don't stop. You just trying to get rid of uh, responsibility and this, that. And no, run towards the problem. Uh, see, people don't like good, strong talk like that, Dean John, but it's true. They, you know, so, you know read, read some John C. Maxwell stuff. He'll tell you it's really good stuff. Run towards it. So most people want to be comfortable with Jesus. They don't want to be child. Many of the things that I've experienced in my life I had to run towards those things. There's nobody else was there to try to help me through that reading. But God. And I realized that, Lord, if you're allowing me to, hand, to have this, then you know what? I'm a, I've got to be capable of handling this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, see, when I, oh, I'm, I'm out of time. But when I look at, when I study concerning Samaria and Galilee, you know, Jesus had to go through there because get this church. And this is why, and this does have to do with church growth. This is why Jesus had to go there. Because those people, watch now, Samaritans had a relationship. They, they worshiped other gods. But they also, some of them knew about Jesus. You remember the woman at the well? Somebody knew about Jesus. Now here's the other thing that blessed me. That woman was also expecting the return of the Messiah. She might not have been as deep as we'd like her to be, well, as deep as we would have liked her to have been, but she was expecting a return from the Messiah. Jesus knew that, and that's why he would say sometimes to the disciples, I must by all means. I gotta go to Samaria because there's somebody calling, there's somebody worshiping me. And get this, get this, get this. This is how I know. Stop worrying about what day people worship on and the things that people do. Jesus made time that he left his Jewish disciples to come on over and meet some of his Samaritans. Oh, and by the way, they are disciples. Let me take a little deeper in Luke chapter 17. I'm studying, I saw 10 for something I've never seen in all my years of preaching. Someone suggests that. Out of the ten, nine were Jewish and one Samaritan. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But look at the one who comes back. Because watch this. Most people will come to church and will serve God for what we can get. And what we can get just might be our healing. That brother was not just satisfied with his healing. He said, i got to come back and have a relationship with the one who just healed me. Yeah. Have you ever been there? Anybody here? Because, oh, man, you know God messed around and did something for 
for you. Uh, nobody else could do for you. You have experienced something with him you have never experienced before. That's what I'm after today. So I've had people say, Pastor, I'm going to stay here because I know God is doing something. You know what? Rita told me that, and I love it. She said, Pastor, I'm going to stay right here because I want to see where God is taking us. We are going places. We are leaving the familiar and going to the unfamiliar. We are leaving religion and marching into relationship. And what? Do? Watch what God does for us. Just get this, get this, get this. That's why God said, get to stepping. The Bible says in Luke 17, Rekai, that they were healed as they went. Right. It wasn't quick and instant. It was a process. Watch this now. They had to go in faith, Luke. I wish I had some 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 props because I would demonstrate for you. Because lepers are according to the because they had to be covered up a certain kind of way and whatnot. And watch this. So these brothers had to take get this now. They had to take the word of God without any manifestation in their lives and start walking in that direction. I know that must have seemed crazy. I don't know how old they were, but God, watch this now. When they when they cry out, watch what they say. Their cry is, Lord, have mercy on us. I paid attention to the fact that they didn't say, God, heal us. They said, have mercy on us. Maybe in that, maybe, maybe there's some, you know, a Greek word for that might be healing, but he said, they said, Lord, have mercy on us. Now watch what Jesus does. And that's what I love about God in the flesh. It doesn't even look like he really entertains what they had, the, the, the question. Yes. Or the request from them, but his response to them, Mama Tim, Tim is this: He says, "Go and show yourself to the priest." Yes. Yes. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about that. That's deep and that's powerful because for people that believe that Jesus Christ came to change the law, he, no, he didn't. He said, "I came to fulfill it." Because guess what? He knew that the law required for them to show themselves to the priest. He said, "I ain't doing nothing new, but I want to show you. I am here to deliver you from leprosy. Right. I am here to heal you from that jacked up state, yeah. that jacked up situation. If you'll only walk in my word, do what I said to do. Watch how God will turn things around. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get to step. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm so crazy. Even if I didn't have a pair of shoes, I'ma start marching. Yeah. Even if I got holes in my shoes, I'ma start marching. Oh, even if I don't have clothes on my back, I'ma start marching. Because I don't have no... Oh, that's a good place to bless it. One, two, three. Saying something. 